<laughs> we're getting our bonuses finally. And now we're sitting on the water you cannot see because the light is complete shit. And now we're on a houseboat doing episode number nine. Okay, this time we do a blind tasting. I brought a white, you brought a red. We start with the white. Yeah, I think so, Michelle. You have to finish your water glass. Well, let's first have a little... Let's first drink it and then we really can taste it. Yeah, after I ate it all the it's a great idea. So you open it already? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, so last week was good, huh? It was perfect. Empty your water glass. Yeah, yeah, well. No, that's already two weeks ago. Two weeks? Thankfully, I put it, I put the... Uh, uh, every second Sunday episode of yeah. Instagram so that people aren't waiting for it anymore because we are completely off schedule and we just do ah, it whenever we it. like. Who gives a shit? <laughs> not show the packaging because we're in a fucking house I'm not even living in yet. So we have so this to is uh, now, uh, paper wrap and duct tape. Volkskrant. But you know, when you go to Italy, you go by the lake like Lago Maggiore, they sell you the wine bottles in the paper bags, right? Because it insulates very well. Really? Yeah. I only know it from America where you know not allowed to <laughs> yeah, drink it's in public. It's different insulation. So we're doing a blind tasting. I was thinking about doing blind tasting a little bit already with... Uh, but I came up with the idea, so it's mine. Yeah, but I was thinking about it with Hank. So when you came up with the idea, the fucking creative champion you are, um, I thought it was a good idea. So we're... We're blind tasting with a plate of roti, just because we don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and we're both fucking hungry, hungry <laughs> and I've been working all day. Yeah, and the last time we ate Hanging food after the, the tasting. I've been in pain fumes for three days straight, so but the taste buds are really developing. Regular, we eat food after the tasting, oh, and then I'm already hanging there in the second and third oh, bottle. Yeah, we did a couple times pizza. Yeah, but or in pasta the because you were crying. Ah, I'm having a heart. The pizza because I had to puke after the first bottle because I haven't eaten like 10 hours before. That's true. Okay, I love the t shirt. Yeah, man, it's from uh, Wien Supernaturel in the, um, cool. Copenhagen. I think it's a shop. And they do a lot of um, um, uh, things together with winemakers. So they did a couple of things with Sebastian Rifo. Nice. And they do one cuvee with him where they make their own label and it's pink and uh, like uh, sparkly. Yeah. It's pretty funny and they made a shirt out of it. Cheers, man. Cheers. Blind tasting. And our special, oh, oh, nice. special guest, the arm. <laughs> 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 it's, uh, it's my painter. <laughs> She does all the off plucker. <laughs> okay, so what do you smell? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad at this. No, so I should tell you. I'm fucking um, good in blind tasting. Uh, uh, yeah, well, how are you with blind tasting? You ever do it before? Yeah. I, well, in the in the beginning, when I really started to to taste serious wine, I was working for Van and Co. And I was working for Van and Co. We only did blind tastings because we had a, a budget for the for the the you shop employees. Bottle, by the way. Do you got the opener here? That we can. That we can. No, I don't. Can you maybe get it? Yep. Your assistant. Thank you. We, young Jamie. Young Jamie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> young. Um, we did a shitload of wine tastings because, or blind tastings because, in the wine store we had a budget where the employees can be trained with. So we booked out like ten or twelve bottles a month where we said like, what do you want to taste? Yeah, I'm really bad at Loire. We took a bottle from the shop. We booked it on the company's money, and they paid us for trainings. So I took uh, the stuff. I was like, okay. What shall we taste? And then they give you a direction, and then they just open it blind, and you make a blind tasting. Um, and I was getting really good at it. I cannot tell you it's why. It's fucking is. actual wax. You don't see it a lot anymore, by the way. The hard one, which you can <laughs> get off anymore. Yeah, exactly. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Yeah, now? I'm listening yeah, to what okay. you're saying. You put it on the company's money, <laughs> and you did it all the time. You're super good at it. And um, I, I w was getting really good at it, but I didn't do blind tastings in like years. So I have no idea what I expect, uh, what to expect from today. Um, but I'm I love blind tastings because every time when you go to a tasting, you already have this eye on the label and you already know what to expect and then your expectations are already high. Hey, and but he actually wants the onion or can I put the wax in there? I said one onion, no cucumber, but my order didn't get through. <laughs> I'm going to put that on TripAdvisor. Red, red, Houseboat number 100. Red onion, Shit red wax. Service. You have to bring your so own food, bring your own wine, but okay, they have so, barely so, glasses. So, 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 so you... Um, you did the blind tasting, but uh, did you ever do any blind tasting? Did, did we do any blind tasting at Portage on ever? Yeah, I think so, at four in the morning when we really were super sober. Yeah, when we were at our best, at our tasting peaks. 
Yeah. But do you know what the cool thing is about today? Regular when you do blind tastings with your colleagues in a restaurant, you know the wine list and you know a little bit what you have downstairs. Today, we have no, no. fucking idea what it is. And you know that's what, the cool you thing. You know the worst thing is that I'm actually going through my WSET tasting uh, thing because it's, it is actually maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, it's you, unfiltered. We can see jack shit in here above our turquoise table. But um, I'm actually going through it a little bit like this. That's pretty funny. It's the first time because like you said, usually you have a reference of what it can be. And especially with your habit going to non-natural wine shops it um, to find the little gems. That's what I mean in a good way. Um, it makes it pretty hard. Um, and also when you use the WSET, like what do you see? Viscosity, yeah. da, da, da. how do you do that with natural wine? Exactly the same, but you add in some things yeah. like um, uh, like VA, uh, volatile acidity and uh, clarity of the wine becomes more much more important. If you can see maceration, if you can smell any stink, if you taste any sulfur, or you notice any sulfites, how clean the wine is. But for the rest, you still, I think most proper natural wine drinkers will still look at a wine and try to see color, taste, uh, scent, and go through the same things, only we don't discuss it so much anymore. That's why I'm saying it's pretty funny that I do go back to it, also because the wine is pretty clear and looks to be a little bit conventional. My target, sorry to interrupt, my target yeah. of today is that we don't find out what wine it is, but that we really describe a little bit what you're feeling with the wine if you have a good feeling or a bad energy. I and fucking do want to try and guess what it is though. Okay, it's not my goal to say like, uh, oh. it's da 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 1982. Dude, when you said we're gonna do a blind tasting, <laughs> I already knew people are gonna, most of all watch it, not to see if we get the wine, but to see how fucking hard they can laugh. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's, that's what I, and I, would say, it, I would say in the like, video now, yes. in the video now, we put it, in the legendary comment section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. put it already what the wine is. No, and now we're so like, they're gonna no, we're like, eh. But what would you do? I would scroll all the way up to the end and try <laughs> to figure <laughs> out what it is anyway. So last time it got funny in the last 10 minutes when they were really drunk and smoking uh, cigarettes. And now we started. Oh, yeah, where's the ashtray, ashtray, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> we have an ashtray, don't we? No, you don't have to go again. <laughs> Eat the food first. Young Jamie but, put uh, that up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, but um, uh, I'm notoriously bad. I'm not a very good taster per se anyway, um, but I'm a really bad blind taster. But the funny thing is I had one experience this summer in, um, I was in Marseille in a wine bar. I Marseille. Forgot, uh, I forgot the name. Uh, with uh, Garrett Story, uh, Cucano, uh, who lives who is in, uh, a guy I work with in the Saint-Hubert and he was, uh, he's a chef in Paris. He was working with um, the winemaker I went to. Marto, nah. uh, Martin Werner. The German. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was the cook there for their harvest. And another guy we were with, this is a very legendary cook as well, Thomas Huxtvit, I think you say the name. Also a guy, and they're very good friends. Uh, I met him a couple times together. I met Thomas as well, uh, working, uh, when he was working for um, Rifo. Rifo. Mm -hmm. uh, really nice, gentle guy, very into wine. So we went to this wine bar, and all of a sudden Thomas comes out, uh, also with uh, Thomas's then girlfriend, uh, with a sock on the wine. He's like, yeah, let's do a blind taste. I don't know, we did a blind taste before, but I miserably failed. I think I I think I mistaked uh, Cabernet Franc from uh, Loire for um, something from the Rhone or whatever. Um, and then uh, he came out with a second bottle and it was orange. And I fucking, I even nailed the vintage of the wine. <laughs> <laughs> so and then you were standing up like anything else. <laughs> <laughs> My like he came out with orange yeah, because I was in Georgia. I didn't. Eat, I hadn't seen that the bottle, but I knew it was uh, orange. It was clearly for me Georgian. And then it was so clean that I said it can only be one guy that I know. Um, and that is oh, for Iago. Mm -hmm. And then if it's Iago, he only makes one grape, so that was easy. And so it has to be Chinuri. And it's funny, but sorry, when you're there and then all of a sudden it goes like and funny. you already know which one it is and then you still keep on going for the 10 minutes and no, then... No, no, I was very know. honest on it. And I was like, but it's not like the last few years. It's much more soft and a little bit less clean as well. So it's gotta be a bit more of an older vintage. So I would say something like 14 or 15. 
And, oh. then, and then he took off the sock and he's like, really? I'm like, <laughs> this is the biggest shit show ever. Maybe I'm good at this. Yeah, well, I'm not, so. So, well, let's give this a try. There's mm -hmm. wine, it's very clear, it's light. It's quite floral in the nose, got some Super citrus. Floral. It's yeah. surprising for me how floral it is. But there's some citrus as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty, um, it's light in flavor. It's got quite some serious acidity mm -hmm. in the front of the tongue. Some apple, some good acidity, bad acidity. Good acidity, some green apple, a little bit of lime maybe in there. But the funny, do you have the nose also developing quite strongly now? At the taste, but it's I also think it's going food, you have to be respectful for the food. It's also but it's not happen. going in the nose. It's going pretty badly to apple now for me. The weird thing for it's me is apple, I get some, apple, I apple, get some apple. extremely floral. Yeah, but it's actually not a bad combination with the food, to be honest. And here I get some oak now. It's this warm feeling, not alcohol. Um, if you see me watching that way, I've got a fire going on and I'm pretty in fucking... A, in a chimney. I, I think it's. I need to add some wood. Uh, I'll be right back. But keep Go get talking. your wood. Go get your wood. I'm going to my wood. Yeah, but then put the microphone out of the t-shirt Yeah, yeah. So next time, so we don't have to think. But yeah, I, I get your point with it's super, a super cold, fresh green apple in the, a green apple in, yeah, the, yeah. in the nose. But also in the nose now I'm getting some apple. Yeah. I think that the oak is really nicely coming out right now. It's getting a little bit vanilla notes, not heavy toasted barrique, but really a nice uh, softness and warm feeling in it. I really like it. Are you digging it? Man, I'm happy I chose this. Okay, so country-wise, yeah, it does kind of take me to Riesling, but it has no petrol. Um, I actually so think right now where we, sh where we should start. If we should start in the year, if we should start in the region, grape, well, uh, I don't know. I don't care. Oh, fuck. Look, I'm all black. Soot. Uh, well, yeah. Do you really care? No. Regular, I always start with like warm vintage or cold vintage. You and always the do that? And then a grape. Yeah. Because that's the easiest Is for me. Is that classic? No, but for me, it's the easiest to find out. Okay, wait a second. Is this super okay. alcoholic and warm? But it and depends a little bit on what wine, on, on what wine it is. For me, it doesn't. No? Yeah, hot temperature is hot temperature. So this is for you a low temperature? cold vintage wine no for me and I don't I know the vintage but I don't know if it's warm or cold in that region at that year but if I would drink it now I would say like it's a warm year because I have high acidity here but I have extreme a lot of exotic and a little bit of a warm feeling and the alcohol is coming out a little bit so I would say like it's a warm vintage it's a hot vintage it's not supremely precise and fresh and and a sharpshooter it's more like a really nice pumpkin it's really broad and white could be also uh, very, very. I was, I was actually before you said this. I was also on the verge of maybe uh, feel the bottle shape. I was trying to think uh, it could also maybe be um, even a, a Bourgogne, mm -hmm. um, like a like a really crisp and clean, like a Chablis or Macon. Uh, somebody that works less with wood, but you're calling oak. Mm. But we just had a before Marco. we start. Before we start, we had a Weissburgunder, Germany. Also had a little bit this same mouth feel. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. I'm going away from the Riesling because I think that that for that it's just. Not and you know the bottle uh, cannot be Riesling. Wow. Yeah, I have some people that can do that, but it's. I don't think it's. I now felt the bottle, but I, I would uh, before even aside from the bottle. There is no recent characteristic except, except for the acidity and maybe the, some notes in the nose, but I would... Let's describe the wine. Don't search for the name and everything already. Yes, I am. Uh, you know me. Lange haal of snel thuis pick. I want to finish fast. <laughs> yeah, but if you were, if you were, because now it's more like in a, like I'm in a, like in, a, in an exam. How is it for you, this wine? Mm. Because maybe that give me a hint, and it's a nice thing. So you got this wine, by the way, at Bilderdijk Wijnhuis. No. 
Oh no, you got to set the guy again, the old dude. Weinrank. Oh yeah, that's I, We now know the name because we didn't know before. I can Comment only say section. this in the camera now. Comment section. The Weinrank next to Westerpark, next to the Italian guy, what is it called? Bella Storia. There is a wine shop which is called the Weinrank. And it looks really normal and solid and not really special. But he has some cherry picking wines in there and he knows his shit. Well, what's his style? Of, 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 of the store itself? Huh? It's a lot of Italy, a lot of Spain, as far as I'm concerned, I saw it. But then you go to Austria, and in Austria he has Nikolaihof, Muster, ah, Serna, Verlich. Um, and he has some really good little small gems, single bottles standing over there, which are standing there probably for way too long already. Um, and he has some whiskey and some special beers and, you know, the whole shebang. But really wine-wise, if you know what you're buying, you can go in there and you can really do some cherry picking, I have to say. Is he busy? Uh, yeah, every time I go in there, there's uh, at least two more people in the store. Oh, that's already more than it's allowed. Uh, no, on his wall it says four people. Oh, wow. And he's alone. And then, yeah. Sorry, I don't want to get you into jail. Yeah, exactly. Um, Ticket is fine. So that was, uh, the, the Weinrank is a super nice store and he also has uh, almost every wine in a web shop. So you can check already what he has, which is what I really love. And always when I need a special bottle, I went there without preparation and I just came in, looked through the whole thing and I was like, oh my God, this is what I want to drink on episode nine. What's also interesting for me is now to try and figure out how natural this is, honestly. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Well, I'm not being really obstructed by the wine as in um, that it is t too messed with for me. I don't find a lot of blockage from things like sulfites or bad hues of chemicals, at least not in my taste, but also maybe because I've just been eating healthy. But sometimes you drink a wine, you can just tell it's, it's, it's enhanced with something or some form or whatever that I'm not really getting yet. The bottle is going pretty fucking fast. And I have to say, no. because, should we do a clap? I'm well, not leaving. I can it. do it again. No, no, no. no. you cannot do this. No, no. Shall we do? Uh, shall we? Uh, shall we leave burps in the podcast? Yeah, I think it's unprofessional. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's leave this one in and write down below what you think about my burps. Yeah, we put it in an Instagram story because it's, it's like with the fuck and the shit and the fuck fuck. No, that's okay. She real was almost offended by all the times I said fuck. Because he's a pope? No, I don't know, because that's what he told me. A pope, dead pope, there's only one pope. Yeah, well, I think Cyril would uh, disagree. Oh, really? Is he pretty strict and solid and... No, but he said, oh, you're so funny, but you say too much fuck. Fuck, man. Jesus, why am I so black? Uh, no, but I, can't, I've, I found that kind of funny. Yeah. Him saying that, because I forgot to tell everybody about his dirty jokes. But we'll keep that for our 10th anniversary. Exactly. This is going to be a special one. Um, yeah, wine wise. I, uh, I, I like the wine, actually. I think it's yeah, on slightly on the aggressive side with the acidity. I have problems with the alcohol. Yeah. Why, do you have problems with the acidity? Why? It, no, it feels kind of aggressive in the back of my throat. Yeah, but I, I have the same. Like, I have problems with the alcohol. Here? Maybe it's the combination of these. If I put alcohol. if I put the alcohol a little bit away, I would say like this is uh, almost everything. Really, you're kind really of giving me hints right now. Huh? Why? Yeah, high alcohol, warm vintage. Because it's it's a pretty. It's not a very fat wine. No. So it's not the easiest one to uh, to guess. Shall we just finish this glass? Slip to the red. So no, you you're gonna finish this? No, no, but I'm gonna call it. But I'm just okay, gonna keep you're gonna it. Call I'm it? gonna keep oh, it. Oh man, I would love to drink this a uh, fucking warm and in one uh, in uh, in half an hour. Yeah, yeah, but it's good to 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 keep it to have this first discussion and go to that one because we have never done this before. So figure out as we going. But I think it's nice to come back to the last bit of the bottle and then give a little bit of a thing because we're actually talking a lot about wine right now. Okay, um, let's just let's just make it uh, strict. How old do you think this is? We have no, now 2020. Are we in 2010 to 2015? No, we're anywhere between 16 or 15 maybe to 18. Cool. Jack, that's right. 
Okay. You you can't that one. That's Fucker. Five, 15, 16, I would say 15 or 16. No, it's 17. Oh, shit. Yeah, so the whole podcast is over now. No, 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 yeah. no. What are we doing here? Well, we're, we're teaching We just everyone. lost the one follower. We're teaching everyone, especially that's not really into wine, that it's, that it's not a problem to make mistakes. We come into every tasting, to every restaurant, knowing the wine already, knowing the story already, understanding yeah. what we're drinking. This is how it feels to be a fucking nitwit with wine. And then you're all of a sudden, you're thrown back away from so much of the stuff I know, at least because a lot of my wine knowledge is based on knowledge and not so much on tasting because I'm not a great taster. So I think it's, it's, it's not a, I don't mind admitting this. I actually like it to be back there. Like I said, I enjoy going back into my WSET ideas to, to figure out things. I think it's really cool to do. Cool. I think maybe all the people that don't do this so much do it more, do it more often, it's fun. It's also a pretty cool way to enjoy wine instead of, oh yeah, I know this, and then, oh yeah, and he tastes this, yeah, you know this story, yeah, like all the, the shit we do every episode. I kind of like this. I don't give Maybe we fuck. should do this more often, that we just, you bring a bottle, I bring a bottle, we know it's natural, we know it's good, but then we can really talk about it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, let's just think yeah. about it. Okay, but um, I, I have to say, without blind tasting it and knowing what it already is, I really have to say, um, switching between, I'm guessing between two countries, to be really honest with you, and I'm guessing between two different grapes, and yeah, furthermore, I know everything. But what? Now I know, oh, you now know, I cannot yeah, tell, but yeah. I know what the bottle is, but if I would really blind taste it, I think I would guess between two wineries and two grapes. A winery? Um, no, uh, countries oh, and yeah. grapes, Jesus. but only because First of all, there is one specific thing where I see the region and there is a second really specific thing where I can remember a wine which smelled exactly like this and it was super floral and that was from Austria and that was uh, Michael Gindel Flora and it smelled floristic and green apple and also it had a high yeah, acidity I'm, it was really I'm, easy I'm, to drink. I'm, I'm it's not Austria. I'm, I'm thinking or it's out of the box for me too much so it's going to be like a Weisbegründer or something German which I, I think it's not creamy enough for, in my opinion. But what I just tasted, like a non, like an, in, like a conventional Weisbegründer. I was doubting a little bit maybe a Burgundy, but I'm very much now into Chenin Blanc, Noir because I completely the, understand the the apple, the acidity, the the the, the ripeness and the development of the notes. What I said, it went to like a ripe apple. And I had a little bit of oxidative tones. I uh, I would I would try to hope. I would say right that it's something like a Saumur, a Saumur Um uh, That would be now for now. That is my final guess, but it's not my final final guess. And no, we're gonna finish this now, and, and, and then we're gonna open okay. it. Okay, because that's me staying in my comfort zone. You know, I'm a francophile. If you go for Saumur, if somebody would be the winery, to, if somebody. It's so mirror. No, let's go for it. Ah, no, I don't know because let's it, go balls deep. Is the guy importing it himself? Sorry. Is the guy importing it? In? No. He's buying it from another winery. Uh, from another wine importer. Yeah. Well, how the fuck should I know? I, I okay. Uh, it's not gonna be. No, you don't have to. Yeah. Well, how many people do I know in so mirror? I know it'd be. Two or three really well-known uh, natural winemakers. Three, four, maybe. And uh, that's it. Yeah. It, no. No, don't do it. No. I think Samir is a fucking good guess. Um, because when I smell it and I think about Chenin, I would not go for Anjou because Anjou is this overripe yellow apple, black, no, Kimmeridge chunk. No, it's not ripe enough for this. And this is Samur. Samur is always white pepper, green apple, white uh, Kimmeridge uh, chunk. Yeah, but that's also, you know... The but it's not true. Oh, no, okay. It's not real. It's not what it is. No, there is one component in the thing where you could expect the region, but I only can say that because I know what it is. Let's keep it for the, for the end. Oh, I thought you wanted we to still do have it now. A, Yeah, that's for the end. Okay. Do you have an opener? Yeah. It's no surprise it's for the viewers. It's quite developed. Yeah, yeah. It's it really quality is. wine, right? It is. 
It's not a pirate, it's solid. It's good. not for Spanish or anything. No, no, no. Like that, right? It's a uh, pico. Toma pico? Yes. Yeah. So I was a fucking pretty. You said Chaplin, and I was like, ah! ah! Motherfucker looked at the bottle. And then it's always the same in wine tastings. Ah! And you move. You move. Oh, fucker. The first impression is right. Always. The second. Ah! And it's an uh, appellation as AC. 17 Appellation-Cotelier. Fendange, Chablis, uh, yeah. Thomas Picot. No uh, Puteau or no. Uh, no, no, the I other don't, one. I'm not so called. much fan of the fucking complicated stuff. You can buy it at Fleck or at our friend. Weinrank, yeah. Yeah, when uh, Michiel imports it. Yeah. Ah, fuck. Do you know how much you paid for the bottle? 25. 30. Yeah, good price. <laughs> 30 euros. Yeah, for Pico. Nice. 17, Jesus, man. I would have known. I enjoyed it more. Stalin! <laughs> 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 and not just down it. <laughs> down. I've been fucking hemorrhaging this wine. But I felt, I told you, it's going down so fast. Oh, it it's has good to be stuff, clean. man. It has to be clean. It's good stuff. Oh, I said so much stupid you shit. had one bottle. No, you said some really good stuff. It's green apple. But it's really exotic, and the exoticness. But I told you, it's developing so fast in the glass. I just said that before you opened it, and that what that's got that got me going. Man, I was almost going to like, um, oh fuck! I was r- really close, but you also get hit with the oak, by the way. What's up? Mm, Battery is empty. Oh fuck! Well, <laughs> I, hurry up! I, I, I came close. Yeah. But it's, it's really like the acidity is Chablis. It's just Chablis. No, but also the complexity. I don't, I, I cannot tell anything about it. But it could have been a, yeah, well, there you go. We're a fucking bunch of nitwits too. That's why we only have uh, so many followers. <laughs> nitwits? Yeah. What is a nitwit? A nitwit. It's somebody that no shit. <laughs> nitwit. Ik weet niks. Oh. Nitwit. Ik weet niks. Nitwit. 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 So how's, how's the weather going on your houseboat? Well, you can see the fucking rain falling in the water over there. Does everybody yeah. like my new house? I got a fucking huge street there, though. But maybe water, I can maybe, swim from. The maybe water. episode ten, we do an MTV Cribs. Hey, <laughs> yeah. come in, you broke motherfuckers! Hey, hey <laughs> see my fucking. Uh, Only a Rudderacker style yeah. in my fridge. Everybody sees the Klaproze weg going up and down over there. <laughs> we should close the kitchen door, maybe for the sound. And I'm gonna grab cigarettes after this fucking vial. Sorry, guys. I really tried. Yeah, it's going good. I'm okay, yeah, it's getting warmer. Or maybe it's the alcohol. I don't know. Yeah, I have a deja vu. What? You ever have that? Deja vu? Yeah. That is a good bottle of wine, my friend. Bring to yeah. What did you bring? Zweigelt? Blaufränkisch? No. So I already know it's not Austria. Okay, so this is our ash tree for today, like a building ash tree. Nice. Where is my. Where, can you. Uh, there are my camels somewhere. What? They're flying around. My camel blues. Oh. Ah, top. Smoky. Okay. Okay. So beautiful bottle, of Pascal. Yeah, I'm also happy. Thank you so much. Little bit alcoholic, huh? No, oh, yeah, it's not so high. Twelve and a half. No, Twelve and a half. From the feeling. Oh, I didn't get the alcohol. But you know this what? Is, you know, drinking. You, but oh, no, you know, Pascal. You know what it is? This bottle. Why in the beginning I got caught by the acidity, and then I got the apple, and then I got thinking. You know why that is? Because this we should have fucking decanted. Should, would, hood. No, no, but then, because now, actually before we drank it, it wasn't even fully developed. No. But I was feeling it was, it was going somewhere. It was really taking off. Oh, this is I'm glad I, cool. I'm, I'm glad I caught that at least. Okay. So, beautiful bottle. Thank you so much. Thank you. Keep a little bit for it's our uh, not, friendly it's not assistant. About, it's not about me drinking it, it's about with whom you share it. As gay as that sounds, but 
<laughs> the thing you, <laughs> you, you, you say like that you appreciate it so much it makes me super happy. Hmm. That you're so happy with Picot. Can you, do you remember when you started with Picot at Partizan? Yeah, yeah. Mm. And we had also when uh, Michiel gave us all those fucking insane bottles. Oh, the first wine tasting we had with him. Oh, no, no, no. no, no. no. Oh, uh, yeah. The first Christmas. The Emilio Pepe. Because we did Christmas, we did uh, I think seven months with uh, Partizan. And we were one of his best uh, customers for that period of time. And then he invited me over for Christmas to say, okay, come by, taste some stuff. And then he took me into the Seuss, this little side store. And he's got his private stash there. And yep. then he just took out, I don't know, 24 fucking insane bottles, uh, like old vintages, Pepe, uh, Hervé Suho, Les Roches. So it was cool. um, he took out some crazy uh, Premier Cru uh, Picos, which is fucking funny. The last night I did a party song, Dan Bonze, <laughs> Leonardo Bologna, uh, we did a party downstairs. I know. And uh, me and Figo, we put a, a Premier Cru uh, Buteau in an ice cooler to put it to good temperature, but it was too cold. So we put it in, um, in a decanter and we grabbed another bottle that wasn't cool and we blended it to the right temperature. <laughs> nice. Okie dokie. But you did it when you were completely sober, right? Yes, yes. Oh, Nothing okay. was involved. Was it 6 p.m.? Mm. P.m.? No, oh, it was 1 or 12 midnight, I don't know. It was fun, I think. I still have the lineup. We drank all the fucking good bottles. I never understand the, the hype uh, behind the bottle with the... What is it? The cursor? Uh, the arrow? What is it? Oh, everyone always posted like this. Yeah, like oh, I'll know in a little bit. I forgot you had it on, on that night as well. Yeah, but I, I Jesus, he goes importing it now. Uh, and it's really not oh. cheap, huh? No, but it's, I kind of like it. Oh, what's the name? It's on the tip of my tongue. It will be there. Uh, where's the research, I, I where's the research I, iPhone? The, uh, yeah, it's empty. Uh, the problem is, mm, those wines. I find at least, I hope he goes on, wa- ah, he doesn't watch anyway, um, is that it, it's mousy a lot. Mm-hmm. I was, he was doing a pop-up in Entrepot and Angelo Cremi does, he had a bottle of it. Oh, what's the name? And I t- he's like, hey, hey, have a glass. And I'm like, what the fuck, it's full of mouse. And he's like, oh, I didn't know. So yeah, but you are really picky with mouse. Yeah. No, but this was really bad. And I don't know. What What's the name it? now? The long bottle ah, with the no, arrow on it. Yeah. Everyone is going crazy about it. And I never understood it because it's oh, way too expensive no, for what it is. Bit, I know a little bit. Yeah. Lynn also really likes it. I, I, yeah. I, I like it. I, man, I don't, I don't know. I think that night, Tom Pakwai from 4850 brought me a bottle of the rose. Mm-hmm. It was fucking amazing. It was okay. a 16, I think, or 15 rosé he brought for me to thank me for all the bottles I opened for him there. It was really good. It can be really interesting wine, really good. Okay. I have one special story about this wine and then we go for the next yep. one, for Thomas Picot. I told it, I think, in episode number three or four, when I was with the Wine Scandal team in uh, Jura and in Chablis, and uh, we got supremely drunk in Jura. And then I think we went to bed and we went to the hotel. We drank until two in the morning. Uh, I slept in a room with the with the son of Nitnas, uh, and uh, we were the son or really with his daughter. No, the son. Oh, I'm sleeping in one bed. It's a, like a two meter ten, really built guy. And uh, I woke up at seven because our first appointment was at eight thirty in Chablis with Alice de Moore. And then you're really hungover and your whole mouth is full with acidity and zur. And then the first sip was a Chablis. And I was like, Vroom. and the whole mouth was like full of acidity. My teeth fell out. And after I recovered and after we had breakfast, after that we went to Thomas Picot. And then I watched that Domain Pat Loop and he told me the whole story. And it's so solid. That's what I love about Thomas Picot. It's never really crazy shit. It is also important what you said in the beginning when you drank it. I was like, I'm really curious how natural it is because it's so Yeah, but solid. I could find... First, I was doubting what you took from there, mm-hmm. but when it started developing, I could tell it was clear. And then that's yeah. why I said the bottle is going like fireworks. So it has to be it's really fireworks. It has right? to be. It has to be clean. It was like a twenty-minute bottle now. Yeah. Well, this bottle, uh, we'll see. I haven't. I haven't drank this in a long time. Cheers. Cheers. Thank it's, you for bringing uh, it. 
It's a, it's a, um, a, it, the funny thing about this. Don't tell too much. Wine is that it? No, well, okay, I won't. Ooh, it's pretty uh, silent. Not a lot in the nose. Huh? It's pretty behind the corners, hiding. Yeah, but you can feel there's something there. Huh? Yeah, you see it. It's a, uh, it's a wine that also. Uh, it's not, it's not big boobs. It's nice boobs in a, in a turtleneck. Yeah. You see it, but you're like. Hmm. I'm curious if it's the bra or if it's really the boobs. Maybe it's just a few degrees too cold. I think it is. It's a nice bottle to this go down. This smells good. It's proper wine. I haven't tasted anything from this guy in a long time. Only I tasted it all at uh, Benetton this year. I, I was mm, so, so happy about it. I sold a lot of it last year in Namur. During one um, during one uh, menu, I actually had this in the wine arrangement, which is fucking crazy to put this in the wine arrangement because they had a they had a special menu with a chef from a star restaurant and want something special. So I made a really good deal with um, a wine importer. I won't say his name yet, and um, I got this for such a good price that I can put it in the uh, in the wine arrangement in the wine pairing. I put it with duck, with a duck dish. Good! Yeah, that's good, huh? Mm. It's this much better than temperature I thought. temperature is perfect. Yeah, but it also, if, if it gets a bit more warm, you, you, can, you can... Can I tell you my first opinion? Bit more, yeah? My first opinion is on. Don't say it's, if it's right or wrong. And my first, uh, my first uh, thought when I smell it, it's like this concentrated dark juice, which is really a little bit in the background. And then I drink it and it's really spicy and have rosemary and thyme and uh, herbs in it and man. peppery. But at the same time I have length in it. And sometimes when I have ron, which is that op opulent, if that is even an English word, which is really yeah, opulent is broad English shoulders. Word. I always think about the ron because it's always also a little bit short in the beginning. And it's a really dark color or pretty purple for what it is. So yeah. I go now in the direction of Syrah and Grenache, but it's pretty cold and, 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 and cool climate and pretty refreshing. So I'm not sure if it's Ron because it doesn't taste really warm and hot. It, uh, it's just, it tastes really cool climate. It tastes really sharp, um, but at the same time I have all these uh, broad shoulders, little bit big but compact boobs, tight ass um, components in it. So. It's most of all, it's very classy. It's really classy. It's a really yeah. classy wine. Much more classy than I expected. I'm really happily surprised by this wine. So you wanted to bring a shit bottle, but no, it's actually good. No, I knew it was going to be a good bottle, but I didn't know if I would still like the style of the wine. But I'm <coughs> really impressed. I think it comes from a warm vintage. It comes from a hot vintage. It comes from a hot vintage. You're in the beginning. Right. And this is why I'm always starting with vintage because it doesn't matter in which region you are. You always have like, when you go to Australia, you never have grapes which are like Blaufränkisch or, or Chenin Blanc or, or, or you don't really have filigrant sharp grapes. You always take grapes which are uh, made for the, for the temperature and the, and, the, and the culture and the climate. And always when I have a a grape which I'm drinking and it's pretty sharp but at the same time it explodes in my mouth and there's all this sound going around then I'm always thinking like okay this grape is not made for that region um, but in this case it's just a warm hot vintage where just the sun burned out that grape the whole time and the grape was on the stress very the whole very time. very true good observation but then if you consider that it's not an overly bold wine it's mm. not exploding um, I think the temperature it is slightly too cold. To it's easier to taste the wine when it's too too. Three. Don't want to drink this warm. No, no, this is the perfect drinking temperature. But to taste and understand the wine, that's a different thing, right? The warmer the wine, the more sugar, the more fruit, the more uh, you'll taste these. Um, you know, the flavors, when it's cold, they get more closed. When it, the wine gets warmer, they, the levels of the flavors 
they disperse more. So it's easier to exclude certain profiles, I think, at least, especially with, um, yeah, well, with all wines, but with red especially. Um, also a wine that can do with some more air than we are giving it because we are fucking amateurs and we open the bubble not even a few hours before because we don't really give a fuck. But I think any honest to God uh, uh, winey would probably open this uh, maybe even a day before. I think when I had it in the wine pairing, I decanted three bottles the day before. Or a Magnum, depending on how busy the day was going to be. But the. Um, you want me to say something about the wine? No. No? You have no questions? None so ever? No, because there is one, there is one key component there, and now I get really serious. Uh, there is one key component there, and that is like, it comes from a hot vintage. And when I really taste it, I have a lot of characteristics in it, which says like that the grape is under a lot of stress, which means that it doesn't come from a hot region, it actually, or semi-hot region, but it actually comes where the grape is not meant to be under a lot of stress, but I feel a lot of stress in it. It's so a very indigenous grape though. I have one question and if you say yes to it, I know where to go. And if you say no to it, I will know where to go. Is this Coteron? No. Then I know where to go. Then it's uh, Burgundy? No. Ne let me ask the next question because we always have a discussion about it. Uh, it's Beaujolais. Now, yes I, or no? I'm giving you more than I did, than I got, but oh, yes, okay. it then is, yes, but what yes, I yes. Okay, what I meant with Burgundy from me, Beaujolais. That's why when you said, when you said Ron, no, because it's more Ron, it's more Ron for me this, because Beaujolais is, uh, it, it, it's further away from Beaujolais than this, this I know. is, the, than the Ron. But there's also a different kind of style. But what I mean is like, is it Ron? No? It's okay, then in, I, then in, I region, in region it's more Ron, but in style um, it's more Burgundy. True, but you don't make Gamay in Ron. In Ron you make True. Marzan, Rouzan, if you can make, if, Surin, you can make a, if you can make a Gamay like this, you only are left with a few. Yeah, but that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, is it Cote Ron? Because if you say yes, then I say like, ah, okay, this is Surin Grenache. But it's not. So I go like, are we in Burgundy? Um, and with Burgundy, I mean, this so is not... If I would have asked, instead of saying, I think this is Chablis, is this Chablis? You would have said yes, you fucker. Then I would have known where to go. Oh. No. No, I'm, I'm, no it doesn't I'm, matter. It's like not about winning idiot. or losing. No, it's no. just important that I win now. <laughs> um, when I go to Cotteron, the grape varieties are different. Oh, and if you say Ron, I say like, okay, Surah and Grenache, where do I go to? Let me finish. But if I say now Burgundy, then... I don't go for Pinot Noir because it is not Pinot Noir. Then I'm in Gamay and then I'm in Beaujolais and then the shit goes really, really fast because now we are, yeah, now, now I really do da, 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 da. Now you can guess it. Yeah, now I can guess it really simple. Uh, because uh, I only know three wineries. Oh, I'm gonna solve this shit now. Yeah, I'm tell after you. I gave it to you. But come on, let's go then. Don't be a sore loser. Now you cannot fucking go wrong. No. No, I can't because there are three wineries there. Uh, one is uh, Lapierre. I don't know anything super hot from Lapierre. I only know Morgans and, and, and really cool climate shit. You fucker, you saw the, the fucking cork? No, it says Boutet. The second oh, one did is. Did you see the cork? The second one. Did is, you see the cork? No, it, no, even it says the name of the winemaker. And even if, I would, I, would, I would see it right away. Don't look in the camera. And this is not shitty. Did you look? No, I did not see it. Then I, let, let me finish the one. I can also explain it. There are three wineries in, in Beaujolais. The first if one you see him, watch the cork, like and subscribe and write in the comment section. I cannot... You didn't, you didn't took the, new, the paper all over the bottle, so I see the labels <laughs> in something. No, I'm just kidding. Let me explain. The, the three yeah. things are Lapierre. Lapierre doesn't do that. I know the third, uh, the second one is, uh, what is it called? Who is uh, skiing, uh, skiing in Vermont the whole time. The comb. Uh, the comb. The comb. The hottest thing he does is Renier, and that's not that fucking brutal. And the third thing is Cote de Pie. I say, I say it's Cote de Pie. <laughs> what is it? Is it Cote de Pie? <laughs> it's Cote de Pie, right? By who? Uh, I don't know. I only know Cote de Pie. Do you know who makes the most famous Cote de Pie that I would bring? 
Cote de Pie is the is the is the is the is the vineyard, the the area, the, the little. Parcel. I only know it from the one winery, and I don't know. But if the, the, the name of the vineyard with the label with the in Latin written thing Cote de Pie, I don't know it from from any other guy. No, but that's not the name of the winery. The winemaker has a name. That's embarrassing. I don't know that. That's we had that one. That's embarrassing. That's really embarrassing. I had that uh, on my 30th birthday. Walter brought a magnum of it and we drank it on that night. Yeah, because Ma Walter sells it as well. Mm. You know how I came to, the, to, to bring this? Super embarrassing, but I don't care in this podcast. There's a I thought there's Cote de Pie is the, the winemaker. Wine no. The guy, a guy called me today, or he put in an order for 18 bottles of this wine. And we sell it quite well, and we spell, sell it especially very well with, <laughs> with um, no, no, don't worry, with winemaker, with wine drinkers that are not natural wine drinkers. So this guy, and I call him, and he's like this really cocky attorney, like, oh yeah, heerlijk, we hebben deze wijn zitten drinken bij Alain Caron. En uh, nou, geweldig. Hè? En ook lekker van die troebele meuk. Lekker van die troebele meuk. En ik was daar gisteren met twee van mijn partners en een commissaris. En willen graag alle gaarne zes flessen. Dus, oh, really? Uh, but he was actually quite a nice guy. Um, but it's, uh, he told me, yeah, you can bring the wine when you go to Caron. And I didn't want to tell him, but they get it with Wouter, the Pieksman. He goes like, oh no, yeah, yeah, sure, 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 whatever, whatever. You need anything else? Yeah, I really like some more examples of these kind of wines. Oh, I'll send you an email. He was super happy. And then I was thinking, what should I bring? I thought, okay, I'm not gonna, like, I think you probably also did that. You want to take something that at least there's a chance that I know it, you know? Yeah. Pico and I brought the, this. What is the name of the winemaker? There now? is the five guys from Beaujolais, motherfucker. You have. Uh, Lapierre? Lapierre. De Comte? Well, he's kind of the fifth, sixth, I don't really know how this shit works. You have Metra, we had that before, it's more juicy, more light, it's a different fl flavor profile. Fucking hell. And, I uh, really thought the name is Come on, come on, then there is... His first name is Jean. Jean Voyard. Oh. Yeah, echt. I could have never guessed uh, it. But you were really, really, really... Uh, I thought the winemaker is called Cote de No. I really don't know. And I'm also not because he also makes... So it's it's Morgon. He has a Morgon Classic. It's uh, just his normal Morgon. It's... I think I don't really understand why people would order it. Because... Uh, very recognizable bottle. Um, the Morgon Classic is maybe like half as good as this and only like five euros less expensive. Okay, but let's go a little bit more in depth. So vintage. No idea. No idea. Alcohol, hot, hot alcohol, alcohol level. 13 and a half. 14.5. Holy shit. Vintage, I would say 14. No, man. 18. Oh, hot as fuck. But it's pretty fucking mm. elegant for 18, right? Mm. The structure is. Okay, so sorry. I thought exactly about this wine. I did not know it's Morgon, Cote de Pie. What is Cote de Pie then? The single vineyard? No, yeah, it's like the nicest side of uh, Morgon. I thought that's so. It, I thought it's called Morgon no. from Cote de Pie. It's I like did not know it's from Jean Foyard. Of course, I know Foyard. It's like, but, uh, yeah. But well, that's what I meant. Yeah, they don't have any uh, Premier Cru shit or status in, in uh, Morgon. There's a fucking cat running at your house, boat. She's Hello. Looking, she's looking for food. Should yeah. we lead her in? Leave her in? She's pretty cute though. Yeah. Nice, nice pussy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you wanna lick lick my plate? Um no, but you can say it's embarrassing that you don't know the winemaker. Absolutely. But on the other hand, you drank this bottle on your birthday so long ago. And with okay, I gave you a good hint. Um Go fuck yourself. Oh, I my know. explanation was good. Yeah, yeah. Don't but, you think it's a home? A little bit. Can you imagine that I came with like, wait a second, this could be Rome. Yeah. A super cool climate, Surat. But it's fucking close by and... Um, no, I definitely get it. And I think you were really good at it. And you had, it, you had the warm vintage very well because 18 is one of the warmest vintages ever. It's got 14.5 alcohol. It still has nice acidity. The fruit is complex. It's dark. It's black. It's cherries. It's... Fucking good. I thought it was more bombastic than this, to be honest. I thought it was... What do you mean with bombastic? 
I thought, but that's why I'm saying the temperature is interesting to taste a little bit more warm because the, um, the wine to me, especially when I tasted them at La Dix Bouteille, uh, no, they were in Peloton, sorry. I found his wines all too much. Too much alcohol, too much fruit. It's trying it's to... Expressive. I felt that he was trying to make a complex thing of something that in my opinion should be simple. You Gamay. know, if you have... Yeah, if you have Maitra, uh, you have uh, Lapierre, it's like everybody's friend. It's affordable. It's well-made wine, but it's still very juicy. There's some complexity, maybe sometimes, but I have to say, I've been drinking it a little bit lately. I kind of like it. Uh, then you have, in my opinion, uh, Metra, which for me is the king, because they're really the drinkability and the juice, com and then combined with the, the in-depth structure, it's pff, close to perfect. I remember, like, I took a Moulin en Vente, 2018, Magnum, home, during confinement. And me and uh, three other people, we downed the Magnum in, I think, under 20 minutes. It went like fucking, like a speedboat. It was, it was so clean. It was so pure. It was so elegant, so fruity. Perfection. Re re it was one of the best bottles I had this year. And then Voyard, maybe it's like because the, the people that like it or that I found it maybe sometimes like over -com complexing a uh, gamay. Uh, I felt it, it was getting in my way. And then he was making, you used to make a cuvee called P, like the, the number, mm. the, the sun, you know, the thingy. And it was really, really interesting. And now he changed it into Atanos. And that thing had 16% alcohol. And I just don't like that style at all. So I maybe kind of, created a, an idea about this wine that it was there but I would say this is up there with still with some of the better uh, winemakers uh, in Rhone and Beaujolais. The more and more I drink it I more and more get problems with the alcohol to be really honest. Mm -hmm. it's, it gets really it's breaking warm here. Yeah? it gets warm here. Yeah and Ooh, it's starting it's to break us um, yeah but but still fucking good wine. Nonetheless yeah this is the wine that will get us drunk but doesn't really matter. No, it doesn't. It's a Saturday, so. So we have to uh, conclude in a way. Ooh. We're good blind tasters, man. I'm a little bit better than you are, but <laughs> we're good blind tasters. I'm a better hint giver than you are. If you would have, if you would have concurred, on concurred. My, if you would concur on my fucking Chablis call. Then I would have maybe gone. No, I don't think I would have called. Uh, I would have probably no. You no, didn't ask. You say like Chablis, blah blah blah, and I said, "Is it Cotteron?" Yeah. And you said, "No." It's like okay, then it's Burgundy. So then I'm you also a, said, "So I'm a cooler blind taster. I don't ask for help." Maybe you're just more of an asshole than I. You know, you know what to call it in Holland. I don't care. Shell of doom. Shell of doom. That's something that Joel would say. Yeah, that's something uh, I say a lot. So I fuck up my life. I kind of, I kind of <laughs> try to do everything yourself. Doesn't work. Uh, I say uh, nice, uh, nice, good, nice, nice, nice thing to do. Maybe not to watch. I have no idea. What the fuck? We have fifty-three minutes. You, you were starting already that we are quitting now. Fifty-three. Yeah, I start to enjoy now. Yeah, I'm not saying we're hey. quitting. Hey. I'm just saying <laughs> that respect my authority. Respect <laughs> my authority. <laughs> Uh, I would say it's an interesting thing to do. I'm really curious Love it. if it's fun to watch this shit. Well, I always think it's not really fun to watch. My mom loves it. Yeah, <laughs> your mom. <laughs> mom. Your mom. But the thing is more, you know, usually we get a bit more in depth about the winemakers. But you... We did but today like did crazy. You, but how do you not know Voyard, man? I but how can I not come up with the fifth one? Because it's uh, Lapierre, La Maitre, Foyar, I the think, Com. The Com. Who am the fuck am I missing? Don't you ever make fun of me that I say Cote de Pisa winemaker. Okay, first I'm gonna look up the guy with the arrow. And then I'm gonna look up the five from thingy thingy. <laughs> five, Bende, Zwavel, Loos. What is your favorite from all the Beaujolais winemakers from the big five? Yeah, easily uh, Metro. 
Yeah. Why? And I was really surprised today. Um, we. Um, uh, oh, it's the gang of four that has the fifth. Um, the thing is, well, Metra is a guy that has been, um, he's very elusive, I think. I think uh, Hank hasn't been able to get a hold of him for a while. Then we visited him this year and he was really open, apparently. Hank said he never took this time, he never was this relaxed, this gentle. And uh, it was always hard to get more wine. And I knew he was working uh, maybe to see if he could find another important importer on the side. And uh, then Hank today said, well, I called uh, Metra, I usually have to call him with an anonymous number because otherwise he won't answer my call. But he answered, he even answered himself. And he uh, gave us like 30% uh, more uh, allocation uh, than he ever did before. Cool. So we got a huge allocation, really fucking nice. A lot of magnums. We got some uh, yellow bomb as well. Um, for me, the yellow just, bombs of. Uh, but for me, it's usually it's just the it's the drinkability. Uh, yellow bombs of Metra. Yeah, just two cool. or something. Nice. Oh, Tevenet. Oh, they call Breton. Okay, so they say La Pierre Tevenet. Which Tevenet. Yeah, I know, but it's, I think here it's with Brut Wijne, but I don't know if he does it anymore himself. Voyard Breton and the Metra. Yeah, and yeah, for, Breton, those, for those people who don't understand the big four, big five, there's episode number three, where we really talk about this in depth. It was three? So Jesus, how the fuck do you know? I remember still. Maybe it's also four. But the know. guy is, uh, Metra is, uh, last year, next year is his last vintage. And so, then? So when we went there, um, he opens up a hooker place. No, I don't know if he's that old actually. I think he's like at least 60. I don't think so. I think he's 58. Hmm? Oh man, can you still uh, remember the guy um, at Latif who, went, who who just sold his vineyard for like a shitload of money and then he walked through Latif like finally kind of joined my life and then we were standing at Tom Lübert, my yeah. and then he was just behind it. It's a legend of Derain. Uh, Derain. That was fucking cool. That was super cool. He didn't give a fuck anymore. No. Oh, Bini. That's it. Gabriel Bini, the arrow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so Metra, we went there, had a really nice tasting, tasted some of his wines of his son. I think this is the the last year he's bringing out. So he's bringing now out 19 Moulin en Vaux, which I think is his best cuvee. But uh, he sold the, um, the parcels. Okay. He sold his uh, Madame Placard. Also, before this harvest, I think he's putting most of his Fleury um, um, vineyards and his Beaujolais vineyards with his son. His name is Julien or something like this. And um, the rest he's selling. And, uh, but his son is a young guy. He's very much into contact with Figo and with Theo Gouchois, the guy from uh, Troppe Giovane. So that's what Yvon also said, you know, probably. Uh, his son will go and work with them. Well, okay, that's fine. Uh, but I think uh, even for his last vintages, they were looking for another importer. But I think when me and Hank came by, he was really happy to see that Hank was also developing. And he was, yeah, he was super hospitable. Very much so. And cool. uh, Hank was really like, well, he never was like this. He was never this uh, cool, engaging. Yeah. Uh, nice. Hey, how I'm, uh, I mean, I'm a little bit off the, off the game right now. All the, the wine happenings are not happening. So La Div is no. not happening. And uh, uh, the wine thing in the Rai is not happening. Is there any... But uh, also all the wine fairs in Amsterdam got canceled. Swap, exactly. Is uh, there anything happening, no. what they're doing differently that they do tasting packages for free, virtual wine tastings, whatever. Everybody is trying to do small workshops at wine shops and stuff. Um, Touring for around. Me, for me, it's a problem as well because I want to make an impact a little bit with what I'm doing right now. And it's pretty much impossible because it's not really easy to set up tastings or anything. So you have to do a lot of private tastings, which is a lot of fucking work. It's not an idea with uh, videos like the podcast, what we're doing to present the wines. Yeah, but it's different. Mm. Especially Orica people, you know, you're busy every fucking day. Yeah, of course. You just want something you can go to and taste. You want to go somewhere where you can taste 100 wines? Or you want somebody to come by and do quick? 
Yeah. I also know when I do restaurant tastings, I tell them, okay, it's going to be 45 or 60 minutes. Mm-hmm. That's it. I do maximum of eight or nine wines. I'm not coming here with 20. I'm not going to take two or three hours. Just boop, 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 you, boop, you, boop. Did it, you did it at uh, Parcental. I saw an Instagram post by you for yeah, the monthly. Yeah, Parcental, glue, glue. And how did that went? Like, what was it? Eight people? And you just... Oh, there was glue, glue. Uh, yeah, no, there no, was no, no, no. There was Parcental. I saw Instagram. No, oh, it was glue, glue. Okay. It was glue, glue. Uh, yeah, well, Laurent, who's the manager there, I used to go with him to Marital Management School and he used to work with Brutweiner and he just asked me to come and do a tasting, but I don't sell any wine at Glue Glue, eh? so I did a complete fucking tasting there with uh, eight or nine bottles for their staff, mostly, also because it's hard for, this was the first time they did this again. That was the shower. Was that the pot? Was that the pot? Was it the pot? Yeah. Nee. What is the pot? The toilet. No, it was the barrel faint. <laughs> was it echt de hele pot? Had je de pot in de kamer staan? Oké, so we're painting. So this was episode number nine. So we're painting our black toilet. The ceiling white. And that was a complete. <laughs> Moet ik helpen? Nee, nee. Is het echt heel erg? Nee, ik zou het niet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moet echt niet? Nee, moet je doeken hebben? Nee. Okay. Wa- wijn? Wijn? Oh, oh mijn schat. Uh, so. Um, yeah, that was fun, but uh, it was more educational, maybe, and it was fun to. Under- these people, they were mostly young people working now at Glue Glue, and um, you know, for them, for them, it's pretty hard to now find a picture of natural wine as a whole. So they taste a lot of the Glue Glue wines, which is a certain flavor profile, and. Um, uh, we have definitely a different prof- uh, profile, you know, we're more the classic natural wines. So it was interesting for those people to taste some wines that are not funky, that are not extravagant, that are not orange or not uh, murky or funky or only light red. So I brought like a, a counter cross of what I think is old school Weinfried, old school natural wine, old school Michiel kind of wines. So yeah. it was uh, Gramenon. Uh, I took this Cote de Pie. Chérôme Chouré. I took Chérôme Chouré, I, uh, which is maybe less classic. Uh, and these kind of things. And I told them, you know, this is a guy that I work for. He's been doing it since 92. He's like your father-in-law. So it's practically all wines you can give to your father-in-law, which is an interesting new angle for these kids to understand. They're maybe like slightly unimpressed by some of the wines, but they were in the end, I think, pretty impressed to taste this more classic profile. And also told them, you know, I used to be a classic wine drinker. Then I went through the whole funk and then I came back to where I think the, the real deep heart of natural wine lies, which is more, um, uh, yeah, more more well-made, classic-tasting wines that are still made in the same essence yeah. as your natural wines. You know, there's no intervention in the vineyards. Uh, it's made well. It's only uh, spontaneous fermentation. Um, only so many sulfites added, etc., etc. Yeah, it was good. Cool man. But it's hard to to now reach people. Nice. Should we wrap it up? It's one hour. Let's go. Let's call it. Um, chim, chim. I would love. I would love to Yes. Dear long. Next episode is episode number 10. We said from the beginning on that episode number we no matter what the fuck is happening, we do this until episode number 10 and then we we'll make a decision if number 1 if it's still fun for us and if we still enjoy doing it. Right now I uh, love what we're doing and we should keep forward until episode 20 and now it's a decision how we're going forward from this are we gonna keep that format I said no I think we should take it up a notch but actually 
for episode number 10, we should think about something special. Either it's a special guest or a special wine flight or a special topic. And therefore, I would love to ask the people who are watching us, the three, what they would like to see. Hello, mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> if uh, we should ask the people, what would you like to see from us uh, to do? And then you can put everything in the comment section. <laughs> no, no, maybe an Instagram, uh, we, Instagram story yeah. where we say like, hey, what would you like to see talking, uh, what we should talk about? Yeah. So after we finish this Motorcycles or something? So after this episode, yeah. we, we press stop and then we press play again and we ask everybody what they want to see and that we can drop in Instagram stories. Yeah, cool. And then uh, if anybody likes anything or... Uh, yeah, because do you know what we never did until now? You are for example, or um, Georgia, or um, New World. Maybe that's interesting for the people. Or maybe everyone says like, please stop, please stop posting because those shit on love. Instagram, on YouTube. That would be a really a cool record. But what we're doing from now is, now we work with those two small microphones. I would love to take it up a notch the next time and just invest in nice microphones, maybe a nice new studio yeah. in Texas next to Joe Rogan, because now we have the funding from Vanscandal. <laughs> Uh, we already and bought from, a houseboat. And so. from Fleck. Yeah, and yeah, from we, Fleck. We got our nice little studio with our turquoise table. Yeah. Maybe we can do... Uh, it's, it's still running. Maybe we can do a tasting with like... Uh, I don't know. Uh, Marnix from, from Daxibar or... More, more... I, I would say Hank just or like more guest star, more guest people, more different wines. Maybe people get bored with these wines we're doing, which mm -hmm. I could understand, but we've also just been doing what we like. So we could we could ask yeah. this every time. Yeah. So we're gonna ask you this in the Instagram stories. Think about it if you actually got to the end of this episode, which I don't think a lot of people get. But it would be funny to check on YouTube when did people stop? And I think a lot of people stop after 30 seconds. 30 seconds? <laughs> no, I think I at know. least after 15 minutes. Okay, fuck it. It's episode number but 9. Episode number 10 is going to be special. Just scroll no on. one is going to listen to Iron anymore. Thank you very much for watching us. And